Namaste, everybody, and welcome to today's Facebook Live program. Today, I'll be talking about Pitta Kappa combinations and how to bring balance to uh, both Prakriti, which is your original constitution, and also to Vikriti, which is what's happening uh, with the doshas right now. And so I, I know that people are still coming into the room. And so I thought I'd just begin by telling you a little bit about what's going to be happening. And so the uh, I, I usually speak for about 20 minutes on the topic. And then it's really about your questions. So I want you all to feel free and welcome to, uh, to ask any questions that come to uh, your mind as we go through the program. Uh, welcome, Sylvia. Uh, welcome to the program today. And uh, welcome, Jade, uh, as well. And so as we... Uh, are waiting for more people to 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 arrive. Uh, I will maybe begin with a bit of an uh, overview of uh, Pitta and Kappa, and then we'll talk about how to merge them both together. Welcome, Camille. It's nice to have you here. And uh, Josie, it's welcome. It's nice to have you here as well. Uh, so let's begin with Pitta Dosha. Pitta Dosha is known for its heat. That's what most people know Pitta Dosha. Uh, four. And I did a Facebook Live program on Pitta, just on Pitta. So if you want to know more about that, you can look up the Facebook Live program. And Pitta Dosha is known for its heat because it's made up of the element fire. And it's also made up of a little bit of water. And being made up of fire and water, it has the qualities of being uh, quite hot and moist. So the fire brings in the heat and the moistness comes from the water, but it only has a little bit of water in it. So it's much more known for its fire than for uh, its water. So when somebody has a lot of pitta in their constitution, well, they tend to have a lot more heat in their body. So they feel warmer, they have a redder face, uh, maybe more heat in their, in their complexion. Uh, they may, uh, may be prone to more, more heated conditions, right? Like inflammation in the body. And then people with more kappa in their nature, people with a kappa nature have uh, more water and earth in their constitution. And again, I did a full program on Kappa Dosha, which you can also look up. And water and earth tends to form a very heavy mud-like uh, uh, combination in your body. And that often takes the form of mucus in the body. So people with a Kappa combination are more prone to mucusy conditions. They also tend to uh, tend to feel heavier and, and more lethargic. So today we're gonna to talk about what happens when these two doshas combine together, because each of us has a constitution that is made up of all three doshas. We're not just made up of one dosha, we're not vata, pitta, or kappa, we're not pitta, kappa, or vata, kappa. We have all three of these doshas in our constitution, and we have them in different percentages. So some people are very strongly of one type, some people are more equal of two types, and some people are more equal of all three types. And we'll be talking also in our next program about that tridoshic combination and how do you work with that and what does that mean for you if you have a tridoshic constitution. So to really understand, uh, to really understand how what happens when the doshas mix together, we should talk about their qualities. If you have a person uh, with a pitta nature, maybe you have a pitta nature, you'll tend to have certain qualities within you that are the qualities of fire with a little bit of water. So as I mentioned, you'll be hot. You'll also be a little bit moist. And that means that you're not as prone to dry skin. Uh, you may have oily skin, a little bit of oily skin in your body. You're not extremely moist, but the combination of heat and moisture uh, oil in your body can lead to more skin conditions. So you may be prone more to rashes and maybe prone to more acne. So you tend to be hot and a little bit moist. Uh, you tend to have moderate uh, qualities when it comes to heavy or light. Uh, people with a pit to nature are kind of in between in a lot of different qualities. They're not too heavy, not too light. They're not too mobile, not too stable. But they do tend to have an instability. Pitta tends to be unstable because it's easily moved. It doesn't have enough of the heavy quality to really keep it stable. So if there's a disturbance in their environment, 
it can provoke pitta and they might get angry, they might get uh, agitated. And pitta also tends to have a sharper nature, which is seen in their keen mind and sometimes in their voice. The voice can be very sharp, could be overly clear, overly concise and overly pointed to the point. And sometimes that is something that people with pitta nature need to be mindful of because just their voice, just their way of talking can sometimes uh, uh, be taken as uh, aggressive. Now, people with a kapha nature tend to have water and earth mixed together, as I mentioned, but they have qualities that are different than the pitta qualities, and these qualities are going to combine together. And so people with a kapha nature tend to have the quality of being cold, so that's the complete opposite of pitta. They are also moist, and that means that when you combine pitta and kapha together, you really get a lot of moisture. Now, they tend to be heavy, and that stabilizes the pitta. So the combination tends to be on the heavier side. It also tends to be on the uh, more stable side. So if pitta and kapha mix together, what happens is anything that mixes with pitta will become hot. So you get a person who is hot, but also very moist and more on the heavy side. So we could say that a pitta kapha person has the qualities of being hot, moist, and heavy. A little bit more stable, a little bit more on the duller side, but the qualities that really stand out that I want to focus on today is hot, moist, and heavy. And that means that the opposite qualities are what bring balance. So if you have a pitta kapha constitution, in order to avoid imbalances, you need to take in through your five senses that which is cooler, drier, and lighter. And if you have a pitta kapha vikruti, an imbalance in your body right now, well, you also need to take in that which is cool, dry, and light through your five senses. That's really the key. That's the key to the combination. If you can take in those qualities through your senses, you will keep those two doshas in balance. You see, whatever your constitution is establishes your tendencies. So if you tend to be hot, moist, and heavy, your nature will tend to go too far. You'll become too hot, too moist, too heavy, unless you have the information and the knowledge and the wisdom to take in the opposite qualities through your five senses. So a person of a pitta-kapha nature, if we were to look at their body and how their body tends to function, one of the things that really stands out is that a person of a pitta-kapha nature will be a little bit on the heavier side and they'll sweat a lot. And they sweat a lot because if you have heat and you have water, both in abundance in your body, your body wants to release that heat. And one of the ways it does it is through sweating. So people of a pitta kapha nature sweat more than any other combination. And of course, taking in the dry quality and the cool quality is going to reduce that. People with a pitta kapha combination also tend to have uh, square faces. Now, when I say a square face, I always take a hand right here and a hand right here, and I try to get a sense of the shape of somebody's face. Faces can either be oval, faces can be very sharply angular, and faces can also be round. And when they mix together, sometimes you get a square face, and that is the face of a person with a more pitta kapha nature. So it has the angles of a pitta face, but it also has the, the, the wideness of a of a kapha face. So an Ayurvedic doctor looks at all the qualities in you, looks at the shape of your face and the shape of your body and all the different indicators physically to get a sense of your constitution as well as how your body is functioning. And so people with a pitta kapha uh, combination, as I mentioned before, they're gonna tend to, to sweat more and that's one of the places that we, we tend to see that combined physiology. All right, uh, Ricardo, I see your your, your uh, comment there, that's, uh, that, that describes you to a T. So then you're in the right class here with, uh, with the Pitta Kappa discussion. All right, well, let's talk about then what to do in order to try to establish that balance. I've already talked about bringing in the qualities of coolness and dryness and lightness, but how do you do that? How do you do that? Well, you have to understand that each dosha responds best to certain tastes in the diet. And so, for instance, if you're of a pitta nature, pitta is balanced by the bitter taste, which is the coolest. 
the astringent taste and also the sweet taste. These are the three tastes that balance the pitta dosha. Now, there's three tastes that balance the kapha dosha. The kapha dosha is balanced by the bitter taste. Even though it's cool, it's the lightest and the driest of tastes. And so, therefore, it balances the kapha dosha because kapha dosha tends to be heavier and, and moister. Uh, the astringent taste also balances the kapha uh, dosha because it also tends to be quite dry. And the pungent taste balances the kapha dosha. The pungent taste is the hottest taste. It's also very dry and um, um, more stimulating. So each dosha is balanced by certain tastes. So what we do is we look at which tastes balance both doshas. And what the two doshas have in common is the bitter taste and the astringent taste. And that means that a person with a combination of a pitakapa nature or pitakapa imbalance in order to stay in balance through the sense of taste should take in more foods that have an astringent or a bitter quality to them. So what kinds of foods might that be? Well, we tend to think of bitters uh, in our vegetables. There are a lot of vegetables that are bitter. Some vegetables are sweeter, right? You have uh, potatoes and yams, they tend to be uh, sweeter. You have some vegetables that are pungent, like arugula, all right? And maybe uh, certain, certain spicy, uh, let other spicy lettuces. But the ones that tend to be bitter would be things like Brussels sprouts. Now, I love Brussels sprouts. Being a pitta, it balances me. Uh, Brussels sprouts have a bitter quality to them. And a lot of people don't like Brussels sprouts because of that bitterness. I love them. And I can't get enough of them. And they really bring balance to my pitta. They'll also bring balance to kappa and to the combination of pitta kappa. So it's, it's a really good combination uh, food to focus on. Other leafy greens that tend to be uh, bitter are um, kale and chard. Uh, these are also good bitters to bring into the body to balance pitta and uh, the kapha dosha. So that'll give you an idea. Lots of vegetables. Try to stay away from the ones that, that, that taste spicy to you because they'll aggravate the pitta even though they will calm the kapha. So, you know, they're light. All vegetables tend to be light. So if you tend to be overweight from the kapha component of it, you'll lose weight. But if you take in the pungent taste, you'll lose weight, but you'll get more intense. And, and that's not going to make you a happier person. Okay? So you want to do it in the cooling ways. That'll balance the, kapha do, the, uh, the pitta dosha as well. In terms of grains to eat, a really good grain that is uh, cool and dry and light is quinoa. And quinoa will balance both the pitta dosha and the kapha dosha. It's a fabulous grain. Grains are not the food that people with a kapha nature tend to focus on. Or if they do, they shouldn't because grains tend to cause you to, to gain weight. But quinoa doesn't have that effect. Oh, sure, if you have too much of it or anything, too much of anything will make you gain weight. But you can have a lot more quinoa than you can wheat. If you focus on quinoa, you'll get that lighter quality that is um, light and dry and, uh, and also quite cool. Uh, so it's not as bitter as those vegetables, but it will still balance both of the doshas. And so that's a really good uh, green for you to, to, uh, to focus on. It, it is a restricted diet. Overall, a person with a pitta kapha nature needs to focus on purifying their body. You have to purify the body in order to get rid of the excess heat, in order to get rid of the excess heaviness that's there. Otherwise, you wind up with a person of pitta nature can be prone to the most lung infections because the infection has a heated quality and the mucus is a kappa quality. So if you're prone to a lot of respiratory infections uh, that, and, and, and running fevers, that would really be, be a sign that you certainly need to take care of your pitta kappa. Now, in addition to, uh, in addition to your your diet, you take in the world around you through all five of your senses. So you also have to pay attention to what you take in through your ears and what you take in through your eyes and through your nose in general, because we're not just what we eat. We're also what we smell, what we see and what we hear, and even what we touch. Through all five of our senses, we're taking in those impressions that affect the doshas in the body. So what color would be the best color to surround yourself with if you wanted to balance the pitta kappa 
combination? And the answer to that question would be the blue color. Blue color, blue light is the perfect color for balancing pitta kappa. We could say that it's the color of the bitter taste and you're taking in bitters through your eyes if you do that. And so you can think about creating a, a blue tones around your house, maybe pictures on the wall of water, of the blue water or the blue sky. Uh, you can uh, paint the walls you know, with, with different shades of, of blue to bring in that cooler quality in your house. Or if you don't have that option, you don't want to remodel, you can look at the furniture that you have, uh, things like that. Because the more you take in the blue, blue color, the more it is going to, to balance you. And that's really important. So it's the single best color uh, to take in. The white color is also very good to take in. It's also very cool, very dry, uh, and very light. So uh, in Ayurveda, we tend to focus more on the pastel colors because they tend to be more sattvic, meaning calming to the mind. So focus on the blues, the light blues, and also on the white color. Uh, those will be really uh, very good colors. Uh, now, and if you were to focus on your um, uh, olfactory environment, what you're smelling, uh, there's many, many great aromas that you can focus on. Of course, too many to go to go into detail here with. But uh, the very, very best aroma that I like for bringing balance to Pitta Kappa is rose. Uh, it's cooling. It's light. It's uplifting. It has an uplifting quality. Anything that's uplifting has a light quality to it. It's not a grounding color. It is one that makes your mind go, go outward into beauty and into the light. And so it's a really lovely uh, uh, scent. And it mixes well with sandalwood or it mixes well uh, with many other uh, uh, oils or essential oils if you're used to working with those. So imagine that if you're Pitakapa and you've got this heavier, hotter nature, uh, maybe you're prone to uh, more resentment. Resentment, by the way, on the mental level, is a good example of pitta kappa because it's it's really stubborn anger. That's what resentment in, is, and stubbornness comes from kappa, and anger comes from uh, pitta. So imagine you have a resentful uh, nature. You're just feeling, you know, you resent your, things that happened to you in the past. That's the definition of resentment, and it's interfering with the quality of your life. If you use rose water spray, let's say you get a rose hydrosol uh, at the market and you spray it on your face and you spray it in your car and you spray it around your office, it's going to change your demeanor. Few things change the way your mind functions as quickly as aromatherapy does. It's really quite remarkable. Uh, the food will have a longer term quality for you, but the, uh, the aromatherapy will have a short term and very powerful effect on how you feel. So I really would recommend that for a person with a pitta kapha nature. And if you're working with sounds and you have a pitta kapha nature, in Ayurveda we work with bija mantras. Bija mantras are seed syllables of the elements themselves. And so we want to increase the element uh, air and the element ether. And this is done with the sound yum and the sound hum. These are two sounds or mantras that will also bring balance to pitta kapha. When you chant it, it can sound like this. Yum, 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 And if you chant that bija mantra, just allow its energy to wash over you. It'll bring balance to the pitta and the kappa nature within you. And you'll walk around cooler, lighter, and more content and more uh, happy. Uh, breathing practices are often done. You can do lunar pranayama, or alternate nostril breathing, if you're familiar with those yoga practices. Those are also going to be quite beneficial for a pitta kappa combination. The last thing I want to do before I take your questions, I want to just talk about exercise and motion. You know, a lot of emphasis in our society about exercise, exercise more, it's important, and it is important. 
But if you have a pit to kappa combination, you're prone to more heat. You have to be careful to not overheat yourself with the exercise. So here's what I recommend you do for a person with a pit of nature. If you're gonna exercise, exercise early in the morning or early in the evening. But don't exercise during the midday when the sun is at its peak. When the sun is at its peak, pitta is also at its peak. And it's most likely to get aggravated. And you're going to increase the pitta dosha at that time. So exercise in the morning, exercise in the early evening, and don't over-exercise. If you're a runner and you're running 10 miles, you're going to overheat yourself. The motion is really good for kapha. There's no question about it. But you will overheat yourself and you'll aggravate your pitta. And so you want to get the right balance. So exercise in moderation and exercise uh, during the cool parts of the day. All right. So I think that that's uh, uh, going to be important. Now, uh, at this time, I'll begin to take some of your questions. And I see that uh, Marcia has asked, uh, what if you're allergic to the Rose family and you're looking for something else that you can work with? Well, if you're allergic to the Rose family, uh, you can work with something like um, uh, gardenias. Gardenias have a beautiful, uplifting nature and really very cooling as well. So that would be beautiful. I like jasmine too, except jasmine also has a little bit of a pungency to it. And that pungency in excess could aggravate the pitta. But um, uh, the gardenias are really very lovely. Uh, now, my assistants brought me some more of your questions that you've been typing in as uh, as the program today uh, has gone on. And so one of them is, what about the red color? Could the red color be used for uh, for balancing Pitta Kappa? Well, the red color is the color of fire. And that should tell you right there, it's probably not going to be very good because it's going to be the, the color that is the hottest of all the colors. So would a Pitta Kappa want to use the color red? Probably not. Um, it's great for kappa, but not for pitta. So I would avoid that. I wouldn't have uh, uh, too much of that. Uh, Claudia asks about lavender. All right, what about lavender? Well, uh, lavender is a wonderful scent to use. It, it's really balanced for all three doshas. And uh, it, it's wonderful for tri-dosha, and it's wonderful, therefore, for dual dosha of pitta kappa. Wonderful scent to use. Uh, another question that came up is, what about the color purple? Now, purple is the combination of red and blue, right? It's the combination of red and blue. And so the red, not so good. The blue, well, that's the best of all, isn't it? That's the best color of all. So when you get into purple, I guess it will depend on how much blue and how much red you have in it. I like the idea of it. I just wouldn't go with a... Uh, with a more fluorescent purple, all right? It would have to be more of a deep blue purple. I think that would have a much better effect on, uh, on Pitta Kappa. When you start getting to the redder sides, it gets hotter. And also, any color, this is really important, any color that is vivid is hot, even blue. If you were to get a really, really ultra vivid blue, like you went to a laser light show and you saw the color blue, that is hot because actually all color has an element of fire in it that's digested by your eyes that produces the color and it will increase the heat in your eyes, just the intensity of color alone. And that's why Ayurveda teaches that the more pastel colors are going to be softer for your mind and also softer uh, for your pitta. All right, now uh, Emily wants to know about the color black. Is it too tamasic? Well, the color black contains all the colors in it, right? So it's kind of has energetically, it's, it should be neutral, except that black has the uniqueness of holding on to heat. So if you've ever walked on blacktop, you know that if you walk on blacktop, if you've been around heat, if it's been in the sun, it gets really, really, really hot. So you have to be much more careful about that. Uh, the black color you're asking about, Thomas. Black is a very interesting color. It can either be sattvic or tamasic. Most people talk about the tamasic aspect of black because it tends to represent the darker nature of, uh, of our, our shadowy self. However, uh, monks have often used black in order to shut the world out around themselves. And so if the black robes of the priest is to, is to create a container inside 
so that you can have a world within and not be affected by the outside stimuli. It shuts you off from the world. Let's put it that way. And in that sense, the monk uses that color in order to create inner quietude. And so it has a very, very brilliant effect when it's used properly. However, for the non-sattvic individual who is using a lot of black, it can bring out the darker nature of an individual. And that darker nature can isolate you. And so you might feel more lonely, more isolated. Uh, and that too can bring up your own inner demons. And so for that reason, the black color is, uh, is often considered to be tamasic. But it's not in and of itself. It's more about how it is uh, used. All right. So this gives you an idea. Uh, I know you have a lot more questions. And um, I, see, uh, I see one here. What kind of teas could you recommend? John Paul's asking, what kind of teas could you recommend uh, for a pitacapa? A bitter teas. What a surprise, right? Bitter teas. Uh, I love dandelion-based teas. So, for instance, if you can get just plain dandelion root tea at the store, uh, it's a wonderful tea, and you can you can utilize that. Burdock is another uh, is another bitter. In fact, uh, a lot of the coffee substitutes that are on the in the marketplace are bitters themselves. Uh, if you look at brand names uh, like Inca, for instance, and Pero. Uh, they're the popular ones that are out there in the in the general marketplace. They tend to roast uh, uh, the uh, uh, the dandelion, the burdock, maybe some beetroot as well. But when they roast it, it becomes really quite bitter, and that's very good for pitta and kapha. Just avoid adding sugar to it. <laughs> Speaking of which, I saw there was a question that popped up before about chocolate. Chocolate is bitter, so shouldn't that be very good for um, pitta and kapha? And, and I know you'd all like me to say yes. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, uh, the chocolate has a lot of sugar added to it. Even bitter chocolate, even dark chocolate, still has a lot of uh, sugar in it, all right? And so as much as I, too, would love to be able to say that uh, chocolate is, is going to be beneficial for balance and pita kappa, it's it's not. The, 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 the sweeter and fattier component of, because it does have a fatty component, the cocoa butter that's in there, of chocolate aggravates kappa. That's why people lose weight. Even if you have the non-sugar chocolate, you still gain weight because it has the oils and it. it has that the cocoa butter in it. Um, but, uh, but it's going to, to agitate it. And then chocolate also has its own sharp quality to it from that, that bitterness that sometimes can aggravate it. So uh, if you are going to have it, have it as bitter and as dark as you can and make it a rare treat, but don't have it uh, all the time. Uh, welcome, Mina. I see you just joined us. And unfortunately, you joined us toward the end of the program today. I've been taking questions. But you're welcome to go back and listen to uh, uh, the video. Barbara says, roasted dandelion is great if you're trying to give up coffee. Yeah, exactly. Those bitters can substitute for coffee really, really well. So if you're addicted to that, that the deep, rich, bitter cup of coffee. Try the uh, the various roasted roots, and and that's going to give you a a great uh, a great combination. So so to summarize a few things we talked about. If you are of a pitta kapha nature, remember that you want to focus on the bitter taste most of all. The astringent taste is also really good. Um, uh, apples are a good example of an astringent taste when they're fresh, not when they're cooked. Uh, you know, because they cause you to pucker when you bite into it, all right? Um, and, uh, and, and you want to be cool in terms of not overheating your body. Think of pita kappa as a hot kappa. That's a good way for you to think about it, a hot kappa. So you want to follow the kappa reducing practices without overheating yourself. That's going to be the, uh, the best way to to go about balancing the pizza cup of the combination. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to, uh, to, to this Facebook Live program. I want to thank you and honor you really for taking the time to care enough about your health and your well-being to spend time uh, learning about Ayurveda and how you can use that, whether you're a professional or whether you're looking for it in your own life. Uh, but, but I just want to honor you and acknowledge you because Ayurveda is a beautiful, beautiful path toward harmony and balance in your life. And when you start becoming conscious of who you are as a unique individual, 
and how you relate to your environment, then you can structure your environment to allow yourself to be balanced. And when you're balanced, you're at your best self. When you're balanced, not only are you going to be physically healthy, you're going to be emotionally healthy, which means you're going to be in a place where you can be of the greatest service to others. Taking care of yourself is really an act of love for others because Ayurveda says the purpose of Ayurveda is not to keep you, um, not, not, not to, to live longer so that you can engage in more drama. It's not to live longer so you can accumulate more things or to, uh, to buy more toys or seek more power. The purpose of Ayurveda is to stay healthy so that you can reach your full potential as a human being, so that you can pursue your spiritual life. If you're healthy, you can be of the greatest service to others. That's karma yoga. If you are healthy, you are able to fulfill your dharma in the world. So when you take care of yourself, know that from that solid place within you, then you can be of service to others. So take great care of yourself and take great care of others. And that truly is the highest goal of Ayurveda. And that's love. Love yourself and share that love with everyone else. Many blessings to all of you. Namaste. Thank <laughs> you.